Hi, welcome back to the Amazon Personalized Deep Dive video series. I'm Chris King, an Applied AI Solutions Architect here at AWS, and this is episode three, solving real-world use cases with Amazon Personalize. This is the third video in our introductory series. Uh, if you haven't checked out the first two volumes first, I highly recommend that. The first one is just a total overview of the service, a really quick introduction to some core concepts. The second video covered how to map data into the service, and in this video, we're actually gonna look at the data that we've already uploaded and see what kind of use cases we can actually solve with it, what kind of models can be built. And then the following video will actually cover getting recommendations and interacting with Personalize in a bit more detail. The last of our introductory videos will cover how to take a POC and then extend it all the way to a production architecture deployment of Amazon Personalize. To recap, a little bit behind the scenes though, Amazon Personalize is a fully managed machine learning service uh, dedicated to helping you build really powerful recommender systems and then scale them based on the data that you can provide. Uh, so in the previous video, we uploaded interaction data. That's how users engage with your content, uh, as well as some item metadata. So I believe we uploaded a little bit of genre information about the movie data set we were working with. Um, we didn't include user metadata. That's something that can be explored later. We probably will be covering that in some advanced material later on. Uh, but in this case, we've already provided the data to the service. And in this video, we're going to be picking the particular models and discussing some of the hyperparameters available so that we can build something pretty performant. And then going forward in the next video, we'll cover actually how to query them with this personalization API at the very end. To start, there are a couple of use cases uh, that are really common that customers are solving with Amazon Personalize. The very first is user-specific recommendations. So in this case, it's a particular user coming into your platform and you deciding what recommendations are most relevant for that particular user. Uh, so, I mean, just your canonical recommendation scenario. The next use case is user cold starts, which is actually somewhat a subset of the user-specific recommendations. The way Personalize handles this is when a user is unknown, we start with a base set of weights for the model that will just render what results are really popular. Then as the user is engaging with content live, we actually update those recommendations weights in real time, and the next recommendations they're getting are actually starting to be more and more personalized based on the data that we're collecting. Next are item cold starts. This is similar to a user cold start in that Personalize doesn't really know much about the user or the item in this case, uh, but what we're actually doing here is trying to figure out how to promote a new item. So we can do that in a couple ways, uh, including some exploration parameters that allow Personalize to quickly see how your users are engaging with a bit of new content and quickly make informed decisions of where it should be placed. Next is similar items. Uh, in this case, it's not saying that like the metadata of one thing is similar to another, but that your users are engaging with content in similar ways. Uh, so think of this as the classic retail scenario when you click on an item and you see something that like customers frequently bought together. Uh, that's what we're thinking about here with Sims or similar items. Also, there's personalized ranking. Uh, this is where you take a collection of items that you've already curated in some way. You could think of it as potentially a filter or it could be a catalog of items that you'd like to promote. And then personalized will help you rank them in order of what is most probably interesting to your user. And that most probable result generally will drive an increase in conversion or engagement in some way. And lastly, there's popularity. Here, what we're really looking to see is just what are the top most popular items based on all your user behavioral data. Uh, and this we would consider our baseline where we start to measure performance with Amazon Personalize. Everything else we want to do, we look to see something go beyond popularity in terms of uh, results. And here, it's a good time to start mapping some of the recipes in Amazon Personalize to those use cases. And again, a recipe is a particular algorithm uh, as well as some additional configurations uh, that allow us to really capture a particular workload with Personalize. So in this case, user-specific recommendations is best solved by the user personalization recipe. It's actually also the best way to handle user-specific cold starts as well as item cold starts due to some of the parameters that are exposed we'll get to in just a few moments. Also, similar items is tackled by our Sims recipe. Personalized ranking is tackled by the personalized ranking recipe. And popularity is handled by popularity count. Um, again, we'll discuss these in a little bit more detail going forward. But it's helpful to start thinking beyond just the recipe. So 
Inside Personalize, we'll see it in the console later when we get to the demo, uh, but there's a concept of a solution and a solution version. A uh, solution is a combination of the Amazon Personalized recipe and any of the customized parameters you can select. And then a solution version refers to a trained machine learning model that you can deploy to get recommendations uh, and the parameters were defined by that solution. Um, again, think of it as a hierarchy in some ways. Uh, and you can create a solution version using the console, that's what we'll get into later, as well as the AWS CLI or any of the AWS SDKs. And as a mental model, solution versions can be deployed via a campaign, which is covered more in the next video, but it allows you to get interactions from Amazon Personalize, and solutions and their versions are bound to particular data set groups. This allows you to create and explore you know, various permutations, um, certain factors you may think are meaningful to your data or not, uh, actually see the metrics and the performance of those, deploy them, uh, and you know, really understand the behavior in a real world scenario, and then eventually take to production and scale the most performant version that you can. Whenever you train a model or a solution, it generates metrics. Uh, and it can be really helpful to understand what these metrics mean. Um, for every metric that we're providing here, the higher the number, the better. And all of these metrics should be compared with popularity uh, as a relative baseline. Um, so if you have two different data sets and you're training models, it, just because you see lower numbers on a different model doesn't necessarily mean it's worse. You want to compare that relative to the popularity baseline for that data set. Um, not all data sets create you know, an equally performant model. But the very first metric is coverage. Uh, and this is the proportion of items being recommended from the total data set. Um, you can think of this as a way of understanding the you know, total proportion of your items in a catalog that are getting recommended. Next, there's the mean reciprocal rank at 25. Uh, and the mean reciprocal rank of the first recommendation out of the top 25 recommendations over all your queries. This metric is appropriate if you're interested in the single highest ranked recommendation. So if, you're, if you have a workload where you're really trying to optimize that very first recommendation, this is the metric that you really wanna pay attention to. Next is normalized discounted cumulative gain. Uh, we say this is at K, meaning we report uh, different values for five, 10, and 25. And the reason for those splits at five, 10, and 25 are if you think about the collection of ways you surface recommendations. So the metrics for five can be really, really impactful if you're dealing with, let's say, a media carousel that starts with five items. Uh, whereas if you're exposing a longer page of maybe 10 or 25, you might care to see uh, those metrics as well. However, focusing back on the normalized discounted cumulative gain, this metric rewards the relevant items that appear near the top of the list because the top of the list usually draws more attention. Um, to get into the specifics of how this is calculated, uh, please consult the product documentation page, it covers a lot of the math behind it. Uh, but here again, the idea is that we want to focus on the quality of recommendations trending upwards. So whereas the mean reciprocal rank focused on just the very first item, this gives you a bit more of a holistic perspective of the quality of the recommendations near the top of each of these categories for 5, 10, and 25. And lastly, precision at K. This metric rewards precise precision recommendations of the relevant items. So this is the number of relevant recommendations out of the top K recommendations, 5, 10, or 25, uh, divided by K. This metric uh, is really designed to just let you know, you know how well calibrated is that list overall and the positioning uh, of your recommendations. And now it's you know, time to start thinking about optimizing some of these solutions. So in the console, we'll train some models uh, or create a few solutions and their versions, but now you'll get some metrics on those and you may wanna start optimizing those solutions. So to do that, you adjust various hyperparameters or um, you can actually kick off a process called hyperparameter optimization. Uh, this will actually take a range of values and try to determine the best uh, out of that range. Um, there are a few really important hyperparameters to adjust within Personalize. Um, again, you can go into the docs and get a lot more information on these. Uh, but these are just a few that are really critical to understand when you're getting started. Uh, and you can certainly you know, tweak these and experiment um, continually as you're rolling out a recommendation system. It's not critical that you've mastered these right from the start. The very first hyperparameter to focus on is the min or max user history length percentile. Uh, this is actually two different hyperparameters. There's one for mix, min, there's one for max, uh, but it can exclude from training a percentage of users based on long or short histories. 
Uh, this is appropriate for all of our recipes and it allows you to exclude, let's say an upper bound of users who are just really, really active that aren't reflective of you know, everyone on your platform, as well as a minimum threshold of users who you know, may have really next to no history and you don't really wanna include them uh, into the training process. The very next hyperparameter is exploration weight. This determines how frequently recommendations uh, within this approach when they're deployed, try something new or experimental. Uh, and this is appropriate for user personalization. Uh, this has two real use cases when you're looking to apply it and personalize. Uh, the first can be, if you imagine you have this whole catalog of items, sometimes your users will naturally interact with parts of the content, sometimes they will interact with other things less. Um, it doesn't mean that content's not really relevant or wouldn't be interesting, just user behavior hasn't really triggered or trickled into it yet. So what we'd like to do here is start by randomly injecting, let's say an exploration rate of 20%. So one out of five recommendations would get something random uh, as a way for personalized to understand how is this content treated by your users? Is it actually really interesting or is it really terrible? Uh, and then the next time the model is retrained, it can take those insights and more accurately and appropriately assess where the item should be in recommendations. The other way of leveraging this uh, comes when you're thinking about the cold starting problem, which uh, actually connects to this next hyperparameter here, the explore item age cutoff. This determines items to be explored based on the time frame since their latest interaction. And this is where a new item can be injected. So it sees that an item exists in the data set, has no interaction history, it's new, and then it can map with that exploration weight to see how often we wanna inject new items into the data set or into the collection of recommendations. So if your exploration rate is 20 uh, and you have you know, an item age cutoff specified, you can actually inject one random item out of five uh, that's a net new item as a way of kind of teasing a cold start. However, if you wanna create something that's just promoting new items, you could set this item age cutoff uh, to the same value and set your weight to 100%. And at that point, you're gonna deliver nothing but net new items uh, to really quickly assess how they're performing with your users. Additionally, there are a couple other parameters. And again, it's really important to make sure you're mapping these against popularity as a baseline. Uh, but one is the popularity discount factor. Uh, and this affects the balance between popularity and correlation. Uh, in a way, you may wanna reduce popular items. This is appropriate for the recipe Sims only. The way that we would normally explain this is let's imagine that you're a coffee shop. The way that Sims would traditionally work, if you see that users are purchasing a bagel and a coffee, and a muffin and a coffee, and you put in, let's say that the user now has interacted with a bagel, because coffee appeared in both, coffee is more popular, it's going to recommend coffee, which makes sense from an algorithmic standpoint. However, if all your users are always buying coffee, that may be something that you don't want to recommend to them. You wanna recommend something they wouldn't try. So you can adjust the popularity discount factor here to reduce the likelihood they encounter those items. Also, there is the min co-interaction count. And this is also appropriate for Sims, but it sets the limit uh, on minimum co-interactions needed to compute a similarity score for a pair of items. Uh, and co-interactions are where two users have interacted with the same piece of content. So we wanna make sure that we're getting a really strong affinity signal before counting it for Sims, and that will increase the quality of the recommendations going forward. At this point, we're gonna switch over to the console and demo how to actually create a series of solutions and their versions that can be used uh, in the video series going forward. To get started with our demo, the very first thing we're going to do is pull up the AWS console. And from here, we'll want to find and open the personalized service. If you've been using it recently, it may be here, but if not, you can just search for personalize and you'll see it, you can click it, and it will take us to the collection of our data set groups. If you were following along in the last video, you may see this tutorial data set group here. We're gonna start by clicking on that. And we'll see this overview process of how to actually get started with Personalize. So even if you weren't following along with the videos earlier, you could actually see that it does make kind of a step-by-step -step process of getting started with Personalize. But before we get started creating those solutions and versions, we'll take a look at some of the data sets that we've already uploaded. So we can click data sets. And just to recap, we have this item metadata data set and this user item interaction data set. Those were, again, from the previous video. Going back here, doing these data sets, uh, let's go back and now get started creating some of those solutions. 
So we'll click here to view the data set group again. Uh, and now we have this create solutions start button that's indicated. So we'll start with that by clicking it. And the very first solution we want to create uh, just for a baselining perspective is popularity. So we're just going to call this tutorial. Uh, and we will select, well here, we're gonna get rid of the space that autocorrect injected. And we're going to check the AWS popularity count selector here. So let's do that. Uh, we don't need any additional advanced configurations. So we'll just hit next and we will hit finish. And this will get started uh, training that model. The next thing we can do is get started building other solutions. So we can just click the solutions and recipes link here. We'll do that. Uh, and we'll also go ahead and create a Sims recipe uh, by clicking next. We'll type tutorial Sims. Then uh, we'll go and hit Sims here. Again, no additional parameters are needed. If you wanted, you could specify some of those hyperparameters we talked about earlier. We'll just collapse that again. Click next. Uh, and then finish. And this is actually going to be building our version as well. And once again, we'll go back to the solutions link uh, and create another. Uh, so in this case, we want to do user personalization. So that's user personalization tutorial. Just give it a little bit more detail. And here we will check the user personalization recipe. We don't need anything else. So again, we will hit next and we will hit finish and that will get started there. And now if we go back to our uh, solutions link again, uh, we can see which recipe we've been using and uh, that they are active. And now at this point, we have the user personalization, the Sims and popularity created. Uh, we can create one more for personalized ranking. So again, we'll hit create solution. Again, with a little bit more detail. Uh, and here we'll scroll until we see personalized ranking. We'll click this again without any optional information and hit next and finish. Uh, and at this point, uh, it's creating it, it's in progress. We can go back to the solutions. Uh, and what we really like to see now is a little bit of metric information before uh, concluding this demo. So we'll look at popularity uh, and from this, we can see we actually do have a solution version that was uh, successfully created. So we can click this. And remember, we want to see these numbers get as high as possible. Uh, so what we'll do is move this off to one side of the screen, uh, and then we will go ahead and open another window. So, And with that, we'll just copy this over. And we'll close uh, this just so we can see a little bit more information. These are our metrics uh, here. We're going to go back to solutions and recipes. And we will make this full screen just for a moment so it's a little easier to see. And we'll take a look at SEMS to see if SEMS did better. We can see that it is active. And uh, again, we'll snap that over to one side of the screen. And let's take a look at the metrics we have here. Uh, so if we start with just the normalized discounted cumulative gain from popularity, we saw roughly 3.78%. Here we're seeing 11.18%. Much better. Great. And we see that kind of carry through through all of these. If we now look at precision, 1.46% uh, versus 4.55. Great. Um, again, seeing consistent improvements through this. The mean reciprocal rank, 4.55% versus 12.81%. Uh, and then compared to a very sad 0.06%, uh, we now have 32.86%. So we're seeing Sims, much more performant model, and we would carry this over to our other uh, trained um, solution versions as well, just to compare. That will wrap up our demo and we'll get back to the presentation. So if you're looking for any additional resources going forward, highly recommend checking out the developer documentation as well as some of our blog posts. Uh, sample notebooks are available that will actually go through this and many other reference architectures. And there's a really nice demo called the AWS Retail Store. You can follow the link in this presentation to that uh, and actually deploy that in your own account and start interacting with Personalize as well. Thanks again for all the time and we look forward to seeing you back in our next video series.